Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. Today we're going to be talking about the RF24-105 F4L IS USM and that's a mouthful. And in this video I'm not going to go over the specs. I'm going to make another review video where I go over the specs because I know people love the specs. They want to know the elements and how many groups in the elements and multi-coatings and weight and all that stuff. And the more technical stuff, I'll make another video specifically for that kind of stuff. But in this video I just wanted to give you my opinions on the lens because for me, as a professional photographer, the, the specs are only important if I'm shooting something that absolutely demands a certain type of spec. But in general, what I'm looking for is a lens that gets out of my way so I can do my work. So it's all about user experience for me. That's the, the number one thing I look for when I, when I buy a lens. I don't want something that's too heavy or too bulky or too clunky or too far on, on one side or the other side. I want, I want something that's easy to use. And then of course, the other big thing I look at is aperture. I tend to stick to lenses that are 2.8 or faster. This lens, this F4 lens, is the only F4 lens I have in my in my lineup of lenses. And there's a reason why I keep this lens around because it's, uh, it's a very versatile lens. But in this video, I'm gonna give you my opinions on this lens and we're gonna talk about the pros, the cons, what this lens is good at, what this lens is bad at, and what type of photographer should buy this lens and what type of photographer should stay away from this lens. All right, let's get into it. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the pros because there's a lot more pros than cons, and I wanna talk about sharpness. Usually I'd be holding the lens right here to show it off to you, but we are filming with the 24 to 105 right now, and this is an L lens, and the sharpness is superb. As you can see, it looks pretty good. We're at 24 right now. If I zoom into 105, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty sharp. You probably see way more detail on this face than you wanna see, but uh, yeah, this is the 20, 24 to 105, it is super sharp. In fact, I'll give you a little pro tip here. It is so sharp, I use a Tiffin. This is a Pro Mist, not a Black Pro Mist, just a Pro Mist 1 8. There's a Black, there's a black Pro Mist and a regular Pro Mist, but this is, this is what I do. You'll notice around the window, there's a little more halation and glow. And if you pay attention to the skin tones, you'll see that the skin softens up quite a bit. So if you're shooting people and you wanna soften up their skin tones and make them look a little better and you're using L glass, which is crazy sharp, then uh, yeah, I would suggest using a Tiffin Pro Mist. So that's the first pro, it is super sharp. And of course, second pro with this lens is the versatility in terms of the focal length. So here I am, I'm out of my light, so I'm a little dark now, but and 24 to 105 is a super versatile focal length. You can cover a lot of ground with it. My personal opinion, it's kind of like a boring mid-range zoom, just like the 24 to 70, 28 to 70. They're kind of like middle of the range. They're not really exciting here or there, but the 24 to 105 gives you so much more range. It's, it's amazing. So if you want to do landscapes, you can shoot landscapes. 24 is nice and wide, and you can zoom in on stuff too. Uh, interior architectural stuff you can do. You can use the 24 to 105. You'd want to bring lights because it's an F4. It's a little bit slower. And typically with architectural stuff, you want to go a little wider, like 15, 16 millimeters, probably better but you can get away with a 24 millimeter depending on the project obviously if you're shooting a tiny little room <laughs> you need to go a little wider it's also a great portrait lens it's an it's an amazing studio lens and I think as a studio lens is where it really shines I'll talk about that more later in the video um, yeah so those are the some of the things you can do with it in terms of the focal length range and of course it's a great walk around lens so if you just want to walk through the park and you know, just take some shots and things like that. Just have a good travel lens with you that's super versatile. The 24 to 105 is perfect. And that leads me into number three. The size and weight are definitely pros with this lens. Now Canon makes a bunch of different zoom lenses in the RF mount, but the 24 to 105 F4L is the smallest, most compact L zoom lens that they have. I think the other 24 to 105, the non-L version is a lot smaller, but if you want the L quality and you want the 24 to 105 range, this lens is super compact, it's super small, fits in your hand, you can just walk around with it, and, you know, hang it off your neck with the camera, it's, it's not too heavy. All the other Canon L glass is crazy heavy. Now, here's an example. Here's the 15 to 35 and 85 millimeter compared to the 24 to 105. And you can see the 24 to 105 is pretty small. It's even smaller than the 15 to 35. So that's awesome. And also if you're vlogging, if you're vlogging, can you vlog with the 24 to 105? Yes, you can. Here's a, a vlog example right here. All right, so now we're gonna do a little vlog test with the 24 to 105. Obviously we're at 24 millimeter. 105, nobody wants to see that, but uh, 
can you vlog with this? We have uh, just IBIS on and lens IS, but we don't uh, we don't have enhanced IS. So I'm gonna turn that. So yeah, you can definitely vlog with the 24 to 105 at 24 millimeter, which is great. You might wanna put it on a little stick or something to get a little more range. 24 millimeter is wide, but it's not wide. I wouldn't say it's wide enough for vlogging. I would definitely want something a little wider, but in a pinch, you can definitely get away with it. Or if you set the camera up on a tripod like it is now, no problems. All right, and now, number four. So this lens, despite its small compact size and lightweightness, <laughs> that's a word, <laughs> it does have image stabilization, which is awesome. So the new RF system kind of works in such a way that the, the IS from the lens communicates to the camera and works with the in-body image stabilization. So the sensor and the lens stabilization work together to create a super stable image. And if you're into videography and you want to shoot video, this is a great lens for that. It's a great versatile lens for photography. And if you want to get into video, it's good there. But I will recommend the RF 24 to 70 f 2.8 L IS if you want to do video. It's just that f 2.8 aperture is a little better because it, it depends on how you shoot, right? Like right now, I'm in a dark studio, but I have my lights. See them reflecting in my glasses. And I can use this lens. So as a studio lens, the 24 to 105, fantastic. But if you want to do more like low light stuff or run and gun stuff outside where light can be a little less controllable and a little darker or dimmer, the 24, to 1, the 24 to 70 IS would be the better choice. But yeah, it does have image stabilization built in, so for your photography, videography, that's a plus. All right, another pro with this lens, despite the fact that it's so small and compact, it also is weather sealed, which is awesome. So if you're shooting in the rain or the snow, if you're shooting in the dusty conditions like a desert, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit in the, the con section, but maybe that's not, this is not the best lens for that kind of situation. But in general, if, you're no, if your camera is also weather sealed <laughs> and your lens is weather sealed and you're shooting in the rain, you'll be fine. No, no worries there. So that's definitely a plus. All right, my last positive also leads into the negatives, the pros and the cons, and it's bokeh. Now, this lens for an F4 lens surprisingly has good bokeh. For F4, I was actually really surprised, really pleasantly surprised with the, the smoothness and the creaminess of it. Although also on the negative side, it's not like shooting with a 1.4 lens or a 1.2 lens. So for an F4 lens, the bokeh is good, but compared to like a real lens that's good at bokeh, it's definitely not good. So I'm gonna put this in the pros and the cons section. Take it however you wanna take it. If you're one of those people who are really into shooting shallow depth of field, this lens might not be the you know, the best choice for you. But if you're shooting at 104 millimeter F4, you can kind of create a little bit depending on how far the background is from your subject matter. So there are tricks to kind of improve the bokeh if you know what you're doing. So that's last pro and first con. All right, so the second con with this lens is its low light performance. Now, if you're shooting daylight, no problem. If you're shooting with studio lights, no problem. If, you know, if you're out in the afternoon, that's fine. But as soon as the light gets a little dim or you're trying to shoot inside without a flash, I mean, yeah, again, if you have a flash, you're fine. But if you're trying to shoot, let's say you go to the, the festival at night, a music festival or something like that, and it's a little dark out because it's an F4 lens, it doesn't collect a lot of lights and you have to bump up your ISO so your images can get a little noisy. For video too, you can get a little more noise. So it's not a low light beast. I wouldn't recommend this for low lights. But in any case, yeah, that's my experience with the 24 to 105. Low light isn't, uh, it's, not, it's not its best suit. So if you wanna shoot a lot of low light stuff, I would maybe go with a 24 to 70 or best, best, best solution if you wanna shoot low light is get a prime lens that's super fast, 1.4 or something like that. And uh, you'll be able to shoot in low light, no problem. All right, and the final con with this lens, and this is me being nitpicky and it's a design choice that Canon used with this lens, probably to keep the weight and the size down, so I understand. But I just wanna warn you guys about it. Um, if the barrel on the lens pops out when you zoom in and out, and it's the same thing with the 70 to 200 f 2.8 LIS. And um, if, if you're shooting in the rain or something, no big deal. But if you're shooting in the desert and there's sand, dust lands on it and you retract the lens, or let's say you're shooting some, some mountain biking and someone comes by with the mountain bike and mud lands on the barrel and then you retract it, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't feel secure about that. I don't feel safe about that. So I would not use this lens in those situations. I mean, you, you, you suck it in and that sand gets in there and then it gets, you hear the grinding and stuff. So I know that's an issue I had with the old lens. I had the, uh, the EF version of the 24 to 105, sold it years ago, but 
I remember some sand getting in there and I heard it and it was just kind of frustrating. So that's the one thing I would caution you with this lens if you're traveling to a place or shooting in a place. Try not to get dust on it or if you're shooting someplace where mud's going to be flying around, maybe put like a, a bag or a sleeve over the lens just to protect it from uh, mud getting in there. Just an idea, right? Because you don't want to ruin the lens, especially at, I mean, it's not super expensive, but it's expensive enough, right? All right, those are the pros and cons. Now let me give you my experience with the lens as a professional photographer. So that's a pretty sexy looking Batman chair, right? Canadian chair manufacturer, Cybart. I'll link them down below. So if you're interested in gaming chairs, go check them out. I also have a review of this chair on my channel. Anyway, so back to the video. All right, so we talked about the pros and cons with this lens. Now let's talk about my personal experience with this lens. And there's three places where I think this lens really shines. Number one, I think this is an absolutely fantastic studio lens. Two, I think this is a great travel lens, obviously. Very versatile focal length, lightweight, carry it around anywhere. And three, it's just a good general purpose lens to have in your kit. So maybe you wanna keep it in your kit, maybe you wanna sell it when you, you upgrade. But let's start with the third one first. It's a general purpose mid-range zoom. Now, personally, I don't enjoy shooting anything between 24 and 70 or 24 105. I find that mid-range zoom lens area very boring. At 85 or higher, it gets exciting. And at 24 and wider, images get exciting. That whole space between 24 to 105 is pretty boring. For me anyway, in my personal experience, I mean, you could be completely different. So. I don't really own a 24 to 70 anymore. I don't own the 28 to 70. I don't own any more like mid-range zooms. I have a couple of 50 millimeter primes, like a 50 mil macro and stuff that I use. But in general, I don't like shooting mid-range zooms, which is the point I'm trying to make here. And as a cheap budget, throw in your bag and just have it whenever you need it. Mid-range zoom lens, the 24 to 105 f4L i. S U S M is a mouthful and it's a good versatile lens to have in your bag for those times when you need a zoom range or a focal length in that middle range that's really boring. So I think that's one of the positives with this lens. Second, as a travel vlogging lens, I think it's fantastic. If you want a good quality piece of glass that you can travel with, let's say you go to Egypt, Dominican Republic, Paris, whatever, and you want to snap shots around the streets, you want to get some, you know, general idea or some general shots of wherever you are, I think it's perfect. It's a great lens for that. And because it's so lightweight and compact, you're not carrying around extra weight on your backpack whenever you're walking around because all that adds up. I mean, when you're 21, it's one story. But for those of you who are like 35, 38, 45, whatever, I mean, the weight starts to, to add up at those ages, right? You just don't want to carry around bricks with you anymore. So the 24 to 105 is great for that. Plus, I mean, you can film video with it. You're seeing it here. And by the way, we're filming at 105 now. We were filming 24 millimeter for the first half of the video. This is all 105. And we have the Pro Mist on the lens this time. So first half, no Pro Mist. Second half, Pro Mist. So we're, that's what we're looking at here. So yeah, it's a general purpose travel lens. Perfect. It's also great for vlogging. I mean, it's not wide enough, but if you put it on a stick, you can get a little wider. Or put it on a tripod, you can have a, a little talk talk. Although it is still a big enough lens that it will tr attract attention. So depending on where you go, you could have eyeballs watching you and some people don't care, some people care. So it's uh, it's your call. Now, let's talk about weddings for, for a second here. I have used this lens at weddings. Usually my wedding kit is a 35 millimeter 1.4 and an 85 millimeter 1.2. And then I bring the 24 to 105. And I use the 24 to 105 for the ring ceremony only because I wanted to zoom out, get the crowd, zoom in, get the, the rings on the fingers. And I just wanna have that versatility. Uh, for weddings though, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this lens. I think I will pick up a 24 to 70 or 28 to 70 to, to replace this lens for my wedding work because you just want something faster. In low light situations, I find it really struggles. If you're in a church or something like that where it's, you know, there's not much light. I mean, for all you wedding photographers, you've all shoot shot in places where it's kind of dim or I mean, later on in the evening, you're doing the reception, it's a little darker. You definitely don't want an F4 lens on your camera. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's, it's okay, it's okay. I have no complaints with it if it's good lighting, but in natural light situations where it's dark, I wouldn't use it. So that's just something to keep in mind. 
But the one place where I feel this lens shines above all else, like this lens is absolutely suited for this purpose 100% and that's studio photography. And even studio video, it's decent, but uh, studio photography. Like, if you're shooting in studio, you have your lights set up, you know, they're pumping out a lot of lights, you're shooting at f8, you know, your, your, your aperture is pretty closed down, and the lens becomes super sharp at that point. It becomes a super, super sharp studio lens. When I have people, clients coming in for headshots or portraits or family group shots, that kind of thing, the 24 to 105 is on my camera at all times. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing for studio stuff. It's super sharp, it's lightweight. Like I've used the 85 for headshots. I've used the, uh, have I used? I've used the 35 for, from time to time in studio as well. But uh, the 24 to 105, perfect, it's perfect. If the kids are running around, you can zoom in and get one kid or zoom out, get the whole family or, it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful studio lens. And at the price point, it's perfect. Like it's cheaper than your your 24 to 70. It's cheaper than your 85. You know, it's cheaper than a 135. And it's super versatile in studio. And when you stop it down to f8, like the reason you're buying an 85 1.2 is for the 1.2. But if you're shooting in studio with studio lights, you're stopping that lens down to f8 anyway. So when you have the studio strobes going, it doesn't really make any difference unless you're really trying to get a shallow depth of field, and that's you know a. a a specialty technique but in general I think the 24 to 105 if you're a studio shooter studio portrait shooter studio product shots that kind of thing perfect lens for you you'll save a ton of money with it as well so those are my thoughts on the 24 to 105 if you have any comments leave them down below if you disagree with me leave your comments down below as well it's always fun talking to my viewers and uh, yeah, that's it subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this peace out I will see you guys in the next video